Is it okay to ask you some questions? Do you want to answer some questions? S U R E Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. M Y My N A M E Name I S Is G A V I My name is Gavin M And I have autism but that is just a label it is not who I am Beautifully said <laughs> Very true Gavin my name is Cindy Schultz and I am Gavin's mother. When he was younger, he actually would say, you know, mommy, daddy, up and down, bye bye, birdie, things like that. Probably, you know, I don't know, when they start talking, you know. <laughs> um, after a while, before he hit the age of two, all of that went away. And then he just. <laughs> <laughs> stared into space and acted like he wasn't there. He just was, um, I'd call his name and he wouldn't answer uh, and all the words were gone. He was, uh, he's the f fifth child in our family so he's got a brother, an older brother and three siblings, uh, three sisters I should say. <laughs> Stephanie T. I Ramby is my dad, Justin is my brother, Stephanie, Tiffany, Megan are my sisters. <laughs> so once in a while when it puts a weird letter in there, then he backs it up and he uh, fixes it. Yeah, sure. so that's what he did. He had, you know, I had a typical pregnancy, you know, though I was older and things like that. You know, they're watching the high blood pressure and stuff. But he, um, you know, started meeting all his milestones and doing things like that. But I started noticing things like, you know, like he'd line up his toys or he wouldn't play, you know, um, with toys, you know, he would, if I would want to read a book like Humpty Dumpty or things like that to him or nursery rhymes, he would rather just sit and we used to have a Bible um, sitting on our cocktail table and he would just page through a Bible for hours and hours and hours. And even like our kitchen table he would go up to it and look at it, you know, so that his eyes are like right along there. And when I've asked him now, because he can communicate now, you know, why did you do those things? And he would be like, Mom, you know, you have no idea. We see things that you don't see. Or, you know, like, so he was looking at the grain of the table. Tell him you went to the baseball game for your 18th birthday. Yeah, tell him that. Those pictures are from your 18th birthday. Here, sit on your bed. You can tell them that. There we go. All right, you want to smile? <laughs> um. So there was things that we, you know, and he would bang his head and have tantrums. And I just thought, okay, something is not quite right. You know, this is not your typical, you know, I knew what terrible twos were, and this was way past that. <laughs> was, you know, um, having the, him being the fifth child and doing daycare in the home and just knowing what a terrible two-year-old is like. There was different things that he was, you know, doing that wasn't um, your typical normal child. Do you want to be able to see yourself in the video? Do you want to see? Do you want to see it? Y. E. S. E. S. T. H. C. E. Yes, that would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> See, Good. sometimes he doesn't just answer with one word. It's yeah. like he's got to spell the whole thing. The evaluation was actually like I knew there was something wrong before anybody else was admitting there was something wrong. And we had him to different doctors here in Racine and no. neither one of them gave him the diagnosis. Then we took him up to Children's Hospital and had several doctors, you know, check him there, and they just also up there, after, you know, many doctor appointments um, and evaluations, they just said that he could be mildly retarded. And I was like, that, that still, you know, I know my husband was like, it's not autism. I'm like, oh no, it's autism. 
we just don't have the diagnosis yet. And then he started early childhood at uh, Racine Unified, and it was actually a, um, uh, you know, some of the teachers there then noticed that, yeah, it's, you know, he needs to be evaluated. Dr. Anker was who diagnosed him, and it was on a Friday night after school let out, and I thought, this man is calling me into his office and he sat there and I cried and he was just telling me, you know, you know, what we could be doing now for Gavin and things. So that was, you know, when we first found out that and then we since then have went down the more natural route with Gavin. So we started going to chiropractors and DAN doctors is what we call them, Defeat Autism Now doctors. So they're really trained in what therapies and treatment work for these kids. So that's what we've done with Gavin. So that's how we've been on the autism journey with those kind of people. What is your biggest struggle, Gavin? What is your biggest struggle? What do you think? G E T getting my body to do what my mind wants it to do. Yes. It takes a long time sometimes to make that happen, doesn't it? that at the age of nine we started you know with we met Soma we paid for her to come to Chicago from Texas for a weekend with several other parents and then all these kids worked with her and what we saw that weekend was just totally amazing to think that you know all these kids are in there and they're brilliant and they just need to get out and then I started practicing with him and you know other therapists and providers and he just caught on before RPM, it was difficult for our family, or even myself as a mother, to know exactly what he wanted. I obviously know him best, so I can usually figure it out. But um, there's been, you know, patience is definitely <laughs> goes a long way when it comes to trying to learn, um, you know, what he's actually asking for and wanting. So over this period of time now, you know, we get together now for, you know, different events and different family functions and all of our kids have seen how far Gavin has come because of rapid prompting. So that's what's really awesome about it is, you know, we can FaceTime with his sister now in North Carolina and Gavin will just spell and ask her questions, you know, which is really neat where before he couldn't do that. So he's come a long way. So mom's got your iPad. And I also have your letter board, just in case you want to use your letter board. But we can use your iPad. So put that iPad over there for now. Uh, I know. So these are just, like people would say, well, why does he do that? That's just his stim, you know? Yeah, yeah. Or he might, during this time, if we talk and things, he might then, mama, you know? Sure. And like he would tell you. I don't want to say that, but yeah. it just, it comes out and, and sure. they just can't help that. Sure. Um, so Gavin, if you can answer some questions, that would be wonderful. So well, come and sit by mom. Okay. Let's see. Come and sit right here for a few minutes, okay? Or do you want to do it in your bedroom? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's up to you guys. Yeah. Get your body to sit over here. Tell your body, come and sit by mom. So then it took years to keep, you know, talking to him and showing him pictures, you know, and having him try to say the words. And even now, at the age of 20, or almost 20, his, you know, verbal skills are still not very good. You know, he will say some things and you can understand them, question? but um, a lot of the things, yeah. you know, he, he doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I would teach him like something and then let's say we were learning science, you know, and doing eyes, learning about the eyes or whatever. And then at the end, and he'd answer all the answers right. And then I would say, is there anything else you want to say? 
and then he would spell a beautiful writing or a poem, The Eyes of God, <laughs> or something like that. And I was just like blown away because I thought, wow, you know, that was in there. And what if I didn't ask him? Is there anything else you have to say? <laughs> because basically he was answering questions and answering them correctly. And then just giving him that one, you know, like anything else. And then he spells that. It's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. He's been doing it pretty well, I would say, since maybe 10 and 11. And now we're, you know, he's on his iPad now and not just a letter board. So now we're working on him trying to hold the iPad without us holding it because he still is better when we're holding the, the iPad for him. Uh, so that's what we're working on now so that he can just, you know, he'll pick it up and he'll say something to us. But, you know, to back and forth communication all the time like that, it doesn't happen, you know, but he will do it occasionally. It's such a process. <laughs> it's really a process. I am G longing T O to B E B H E A R P. I hope that others find hope in knowing that we are here longing to be heard. Mm -hmm. Yes. You'll get the rest of the sentence. Whatever you think. <laughs> You're doing really good, Gavin. Yeah. Yes, all right. All right. Bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. Yep. T. Oh, because too many people sit in silence. That's right. Too many people do sit in silence. You're correct. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, like Gavin is so encouraging and hopeful and things like that. You know, for his, for Christmas, we asked him what he wanted for Christmas, and he always was a toe walker and a really bad toe walker. He was like a Barbie doll foot. You know how how high up that is. So for Christmas, he says, um, "I want all I want for Christmas is my two flat feet, and I want to um, sponsor a child." Oh wow! So the two. <laughs> Well, he sponsored two because he couldn't pick from the ones we were looking at. So those two boys right there, he sponsored them. Or he, you know, $64 out of his money that's coming in from the state, you know, yeah. goes to those boys. One in Africa and, and then the other one in um, Honduras. Oh, but I know. And it's like, what, you know, 19 year old kid wants to do that, yeah. you know, or whatever. And that's what's so cool. It's like he's not into, um, all the stuff that, you know, a lot of teenagers are into, sure, you know, he wants, yeah, yeah, he yeah. wants to, uh, you know, help others. So that's pretty neat. Yeah, that's amazing. Is that the one that, or is it too bad in here that you couldn't ask a question? Yeah, we, we can could get him to talk. Up. Okay. Good. All right. How would you describe Gavin's future? Well, for Gavin's future, he would like to be a public speaker, which he has already accomplished that a few times already. He's, uh, he speaks down at Autism One every year, which is a huge conference in Chicago over Memorial Day weekend. Would you like to say something to everybody? Hi. <laughs> My name Dam. He was practicing that. My name is Gavin. All right. Can't. And he's went into some um, churches and spoke. He's went to some schools and spoke, um, you know, giving them hope and encouragement. Uh, he also wants to be a published author. So he's got lots and lots of writings that mom <laughs> has got to try to figure out how to organize them all and you know get them into a book form and he already knows the name of the book he you know he's got a lot of stuff already done it's just now compiling that all and figuring out you know um the best way of 
putting certain writings in, you know, because I'm sure there's going to be more than one book. It's just getting that first one going and then going from there. Because even I had even thought, you know, with how I homeschooled him and everything that he shared, even through homeschooling, that could be a book in itself, you know, because it was just, I, he, I think I learned just as much from him as he learned from me. It was just such a neat experience to do that day after day, you know, with him. And some people say, oh, you're nuts, you know, or how do you find the time? Or I could never do that, you know, but you do what your child needs, you know, and like I said, you know your child best. So I feel in my heart he's going to have a wonderful future because, you know, he's not going to just settle for, you know, wiping tables or pushing in carts. You know, he wants to write the book and to encourage others and and things. So we'll see where it takes him. So what would you like to do for a living? I want to get my writings published. That is my dream. Mm -hmm. What do you like to write about? Mama. W. Well, my faith is strong, but is what the world needs most to hear this will give them hope and encourage. Courage. What? Encourage. M. E. N. T. Well, my faith is strong, but is what the world needs most to hear this will give them hope and encouragement. Encouragement. Okay. <laughs> you push the button a little too soon. Yeah. Jason, it was such a pleasure to spend time with you. Please tell your children that I will be praying for them. I'll tell them. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for watching me do rapid prompting method. It takes time, but it is my voice, and this is me. I want others to learn from me. Thanks, Jason. God bless you. Yeah. <laughs> I bless you as well. <laughs> Good job, Gavin. <laughs> J. A. S. O. N. Jason. So if you were going to say something to him, what do you think you're going to tell him? Tell him thank you for coming. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Well, I could maybe even say that on the video or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> whatever. Yeah, yeah. Instead of me telling you all this now. <laughs> yeah, Jason, it is wonderful that you care enough to do this video to help others understand us better. I appreciate you sharing. Yeah.